Just lift up Cindy and John to you right now. Strength, strength, strength. Uh, more strength, less pain, all complications taken care of. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the healer. Father, we uh, thank you that the doctors can know, find out what's happening, but we know that you ultimately are the healer, Father, and we just ask peace, peace, peace and healing, the Holy Spirit of healing, come over and drive out any infirmity that is in her body, any malfunction, we command to be made corrected right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that the doctors are giving good reports and we reject any bad reports in Jesus' name. And we thank you for your goodness and mercy that hovers over them and their household and their property and their family, uh, Father, and their very beings, their bodies, their certainly their souls and their minds, Father, that love, joy, peace permeates, permeates, permeates love, joy, and peace as the fruit of the Holy Spirit. This is still really hot. If you can turn it down a little bit more. Father, we just thank you for it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, mighty God and Savior. Seated at your right hand, interceding for us. To you, the Father. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Aggie, if you want to come and share, we are live streaming, streaming. yes, Sean? Yeah. Okay, uh, what uh, the word that she had for Cindy and Cindy and John, I hope you're watching. Hi, Cindy. Uh, Juan and I were praying for you last night, and as we were praying, I heard the Lord say that the heart problems you're having physically are a result of the spirit of your spiritual heartbreaks throughout your life and um i guess that was all <laughs> just that your your physical heartbreak is every uh heart problems a result of your uh, spiritual heartbreaks throughout your life um Go ahead and pray. Is it okay if I pray Aggie, for Please do, and then hand the mic to Mom so she can continue okay. in prayer. We're just going to spend a little time in prayer here. Jesus, you are the living water. I ask right now that you let your living water flow through Cindy's heart and through her whole, her whole body, her whole system. And everywhere that she has been attacked that results in both the spiritual heartbreak and her physical heart problems now we ask that you wash away all defilement that has caused her problems throughout her life we ask that you wash away that defilement from every nook and cranny. Holy Spirit, we ask for you to rub your healing balm on all of those hurting places and that you bring healing to every part of her spiritual as well as physical heart. We ask that whatever has caused these problems for her, that Holy Spirit, you substitute them with the blessings that God has always wanted her to have. And I sense that you may be crying, Cindy, or have tears in your eyes, and that's a good thing. Those tears are healing and they're a gift from God. So don't stop them, allow them to come. If they're, if they're not right now and I'm just off in left field, then if they come, allow them to come because those are healing. They're a release of, um, they're a release of empathy, they're a release of pain that you've been holding. And those tears have 
medicinal properties in them. So I bless you in the name of Jesus. And here's mom. Father God, Jesus lives in Cindy's heart. And Satan has to get out, quit assaulting, quit attacking her. And I pray, Father God, that as her heart beats in sync with yours, that she will rise up, Father, that she will be everything that you created her to be. I thank you, Father God, that you brought us together tonight, Father, that we stand, and having done all to stand, that we agree with one another that Sydney's condition is going to be taken care of, that she's going to be everything that you planned for her to be. We praise your holy name for who you are, for what you've done, what you are doing, and what you're going to do. And we pray, Father God, that tonight, I pray, Father, that as Sean brings the word, Father, that your Holy Spirit will flow through him, that he might be able to, to say those words that we need to hear. And I thank you, praise you, Lord, for all you have done. And I pray, Father, that when we stand and have him done all to stand in Jesus' name.
God and King. Glorious God is He. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and mercy that has followed us here and continues to go with us all the days of our lives. And we soak in your presence as we join with the body to become under your headship. For we declare you our head this night. We declare your sovereignty, your majesty, your beauty in all the earth. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glorious God and King. Thank you, Father. That your presence heals. That your presence encourages. That your presence brings life and brings joy, brings love and peace, Father. Your presence is here and we taste of it, we sip of it, we drink it, we inhale it. We join with it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. We ask for more that we may overflow, that we may pour out into others, on others, through others, Father, that we may be so full with your presence <laughs> that people are healed as we pass by, as we speak words of faith over them, as we touch and agree. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for all that you've testified to us, all you've promised us, all you have committed to us, for you gave all. You committed all, Lord Jesus. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Thank you for more better healing from hearing for mom. Healing, yes, and hearing, yes. We thank you for better hearing aids, but we ask you actual improvement in her hearing. We thank you that she's able to hear and um, hear and um, receive. Amen? In Jesus' name. We know she's an outpouring to all of us. And Father, may you be an overabundant outpouring towards her. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Sean, you ready? Yeah. Come on up. Hey, uh, let's give him a hand. Make him feel welcome. Make him feel, make him feel important. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let us have it. All right. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. All right. Let's start with a prayer here. Father, we just thank you for this evening. We thank you for... Just the blessing that we all have to be here tonight in this place. God, I thank you that every single person here in this building is a blessing, is a vital part of your body. You love every single person here. There's not a single lesser one here in your eyes, God. Amen. Just thank you that your love overflows yes. to all of us, every single one of us. That Jesus, what you were really saying when you said, don't forbid the little children to come to me. You meant that there was nobody, no matter what the culture may say, that was less in your eyes. You loved every single one of them. Just as you touched the leper before you even said, be healed. 
We thank you, Jesus, that you have broken every stereotype, that you have shown just how much you care for even the most wretched and even the most outcasts of the outcasts. And God, I just thank you that where we are here and now, that we are in a place to receive from you, that this is a place of the presence. This is a place that hungers after oh, God. Thank you, Father. Lord, we want to be the people that are called after your name, that you show up, that you are the one that gets the glory for what happens. God, right now, I just ask that you would grace me to be a conduit for your love, for your word, for what you want to speak this night, God. That everyone over the live, everyone that is here, that's present in this building, would receive from your spirit what it is that you have to give them this evening, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's a huge honor to be here. I love every single one of you here. appreciate all of you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for being here. And uh, so I was preparing for this, and, you know, I've, I've preached twice at a podium before, and I both times I got to actually write out the message. God gave it to me in advance a couple times, like before I even got up to preach. So I was like, hey, that's awesome. So this time I was preparing, and I was writing, and I was like, you know, I haven't asked about it yet, so I don't know if this is really what I'm going to preach or not. I was like, I kind of have a feeling that I'm doing this, and, and it's like, hey, this is good, this is preparing me, but I'm not going to get to preach from my notes. I'm not going to get to use this. Like, God's going to push me out there and make me actually just be in the moment with Him and just engage with people and just, you know, be, be a conduit, because this isn't about my knowledge, this isn't about what I have to give, what I have to offer, it's what, what God has to give. Amen. You know, the platform, it matters, and it doesn't matter how many people are there listening, you're the people of God. You know, if two or three touch a thing together in agreement, it's going to be done for them by their Father in Heaven. That's enough to Jesus for an assembly to say, okay, we're going to do something. We're going to make something happen here. So, that's... Ever since we came to this church, Brandy and I, when we first came here, like, we just felt in the presence of God. You know, we came and we felt this, there's real worship here. There's a real love for God in this place. You know, it felt like home. It felt safe. And that's just, that's rare. You know, that that's not everywhere you go. <laughs> so, that was, as soon as we came in, and we both, you know... We don't like to jump to conclusions. We like to be sure, hey, this really is God. You know, we're both coming from the same place. But a lot of times the confirmation is, it's both. It's coming to both of us at the same time. Are you getting this? Yeah, me, oh, me too. And we know it's like, okay, we both felt this is like home. So we're like, okay, this, this is God then. So I want you to know that while where we are, there might not be many of us right now. There's not a lot going on here right now. But... There's a lot going on here right now because wherever we're gathered in the name of Jesus, in reality, in truth, in sincerity, where we're worshiping God, worshiping the Father in spirit and in truth, there's power in the place. Yeah. There's something going on. It's the heart that matters, not the number. Mm -hmm. And it's so many revivals, so many things that started did not start with massive amounts of people. Oh, yeah. It started with a couple, with a handful and sometimes with those that people would, you know, make fun of and mock and say, who are you? You know, like, why would God come to you? You're not polished. You didn't, you didn't go to a seminary. You're not, you haven't had experience overseas and, and seen amazing things. Why would God show up for you? And lo and behold, you know, he has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Amen. And the weak things to confound the strong. And that's, that's what we're here for. We're here for him. You know, we're not here to make a name for ourselves. You know, not to us, O Lord, but to your name, give the glory. You know, that's that's the spirit. That's the heart of the psalmist. And that's that's in this place, you know, that, that's encoded in this place, in the genetics of this place. So what I want to do is I want to just say through every single word and through every breath, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. We want the manifestation of God. We want to see change in this city. We want to see change everywhere we go. We want this place to be a place that people can catch God's fire. They can take it out to the nations. They can go wherever it is that he wants to send them. The point isn't to try to capture anybody here. The point is to touch and impact people. And that should be true for any of us. You know, like John the Baptist. That's, that's, the, that's a model that we really need to follow because Jesus is the bridegroom and John the Baptist was the ultimate friend of the bridegroom. I must increase and he must, I must decrease and he must increase. And if that's the spirit that we're moving in, he's going to bless us. He's going to come in the spirit of Elijah. 
He is going to reconcile the hearts of the children to the Father and the hearts of the fathers to the children. And that's where we need to be. Like, this nation needs generational healing. Amen. This, you know, especially since the 60s, you know, especially since the, that was the biggest generational divide that there has ever been. From that point, there was sort of a curse that generations were cut off from each other. And, and, and then we just kind of took it as a cultural norm. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're just, I don't understand my teenagers, and they, they don't like me, and I don't like them, and that's just how it is, you know. And it's, no, that's not how it's supposed to be. You know, there was differentiation. There's always been differences in generations, for sure. God has a different calling. God has a different spirit in each generation. And the devil usually tries to get ahead of that and take advantage of that and take it the wrong way. You know, bring things to an extreme instead of letting it be in balance of what God wants to do. But God always has a redemptive purpose in the midst of it all. He always has a plan to fix the things that have been broken. And even if it's just a small remnant, even if it's just a small group of a generation that will do what's right, he finds a way to pass on what was meant to be passed on. There you go. And sometimes it means that it's, some generation ends up dealing with a lot of stuff that we have to carry and move forward and move the ball down the field because some things were missed. You know, Sean Bowles talked about that, you know, we, on one of the, uh, one of the videos that we watched recently. And that's just, that's such a, uh, such a God thing that he's like, you know what, I'm going to just have you do not only your calling, but their calling and their calling and their calling, and you're going to carry it all because it's, it's by my strength, it's by my power. It's not, it's not by your power, it's by my spirit. And that's what we really need to be drawing from, you know, not from our own knowledge, not from our own ability. Like, I could prepare a sermon, I could, I could, I could wow everybody with my knowledge, I've learned some things, but you know what, what difference does it make? You're not here to see how smart Sean is, how good Sean is at preaching, who cares, man? That doesn't matter. What matters is what does God want to do here? You know, that's, that's the important thing. That's the heart that needs to be in all of us. Uh, ironically, that's kind of what my message actually was going to be, is that we need to be listening to the voice of God. That's, that's the most important thing. We call ourselves Christians. We, we say that we're, we're little Christs, you know, that we're, we are a representation of Him. But how much are we listening? How much are we really hearing? on a daily basis and in details? Do we know what our mandate is? in our personal life, in the season that He has us in, what is it that He's calling us to do? What is it? What are the parameters of that mandate? Because He does give us laterality. He does give us freedom. You know, there are things that we get to do that we get to decide. We don't have to ask Him about every single little detail. But is it really a good idea to try to figure out the furthest edge that we can take and, and, and not have to ask God and still be okay? Should that really be our attitude? I mean, would that be good in a marriage? Like, just how little contact can I have with you and maintain this marriage? Just how little can I involve you and, and, and still have enough intimacy to say, oh yeah, we're married more than just in paper? That should not be our heart. You know, our, our heart should be more of you, Holy Spirit. I want more of you, God. I want to know you better. I want to have you involved in everything. You know, like Paul said, you know, to the, to the Corinthians, said to the churches, I pray in the Spirit more than all of you. And, yeah, that was about praying in tongues, you could say, but it's also just about being in a place of constantly hearing and receiving from God. Being in a place of constantly communing with Him, which He said, we should be in prayer continuously. We should be, that, that doesn't mean that everywhere we go, we're just saying, Lord, in Jesus' name, formulate prayers. That means we're hearing Him. That means we're communicating with Him. That means we're, you know, the, the very word prayer it is a request, and the request is, God, we want your will. God, we want your kingdom. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. I mean, I've got plans. I've got ideas, but what's your idea? What's your plan? Like, the whole purpose of bringing our actions, our words, our plans forward shouldn't just be, because this is what I want to do. It should be, I have an idea, Daddy. What do you think? What, what do you think? This is what I want to do. Let's play. Let's do something. Become like children. We're engaging with God, and He wants to engage with us. And it, it's so hard sometimes because it's like we get caught in this on-off switch that it's either it has to be completely God just taking over and moving through us, or, or we have to be in charge of everything. 
and we have to get down to every detail, and we have a hard time just moving with the Holy Spirit, just going together with God and everything. But that's what we're called to learn to do. It's a dance, you know. It's, it's a divine romance. It's something that we're engaged with God together. And it, it involves changes. It involves changes of season. It involves changes of rhythm. There are times where it's going to be like God saying, don't even leave the house until I've told you it's time to go. Don't even take that road unless I tell you it's the right road to take. And other times it might be, hey, I want you to write a song. About what? Just write a song. Okay, well, all right, Lord, I'll do it. And it's because it is about faith, it is about relationship. He enjoys our creativity. He, for freedom's sake, for liberty's sake, he set us free. God loves freedom. But freedom wasn't so that we can get out of relationship. Freedom wasn't so that we can disconnect from God and from others. It was so that we can choose connection. It's so that we can choose love. You know, without freedom, there is no love. But without love, there's no freedom. There's, there's nothing free about hell. You know, there's nothing free about separation from God. So, the same kind of thing has been said about sin. You know, that we shouldn't be looking for the far edges of just, just how close can we toe the line and not be in sin, and not be cast out in heaven. Still keep our salvation. That's a bad attitude. Yeah. That's a misappropriation of grace. That's, that is a disrespect to the blood of Jesus, yeah. and the sacrifice that he made for us. That's a, that is not what we should be doing. What we should be doing is completely just, how can I be as pleasing to you as possible? Yeah. You loved me first. You love me no matter what I do, and so I should love you even more, yeah. not less. I shouldn't be looking at you and saying, Huh, I wonder what I can get away with. I should be looking at you and saying, you're so much better than I am. You're so much kinder. You're so much sweeter. You're so much just better in every conceivable way than what I could just make up myself, what I could just do myself. I, yeah, I could live life without you, but why? Why would I want to? Why would that be something I would desire? Like, you've changed me. You've changed everything. And we can't lose that first love. We, we have to make a decision. That's not going to go away. And it doesn't go away because you keep the relationship alive, like a marriage. You stay engaged. You stay involved. You continue to love. And it's, it's a choice. You know, it's not a feeling. It's not something that we're just waiting to, to have happen to us. It's something we engage and we choose every day. We choose all the time. And it goes both ways. I mean, he never stops pursuing us. He never stops showing up, popping up, coming in, even when we're unfaithful, even when we're messing up, you know, and we're not doing what we should be doing, even when we've lost interest. He's faithful, you know, he, he continues, he keeps on coming. He doesn't, he doesn't have it in him to just be like, you know what, you don't even care, so I'm not going to try anymore, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to divorce you, I'm done. It's not in God's heart to do that. But it's crazy. That, that's just how good he is. And it should bring us to a place to just cry out. We really should. From You know, sin isn't just the most disgusting things a person can do. is isn't just the most abom abominable, most evil things that a person can do. Sin is everything that misses the mark of God's best for your life. It's everything that is outside of his destiny for you. It's everything that misses his heart for you. And our attitude really should be an abject, you know, just sense when we fall out of alignment with him, when we forget him, when we miss him, we lose him somewhere along the way, our, our heart attitude should be, oh man, Jesus, I am, I, ah, this is not life. Without you, it's just not life. It, nothing is the same. I remember what it was like walking side by side with you. I remember what it was like walking in the garden. You were there with me. I remember what you did, how you came through for me. And God, I am so sorry. I just want to be back in that place with you. I want to be back there with you. I want to love you like you've loved me. 
that should be constantly the heart that we come back to. You know, and it's, it's, we all have to go through a journey. You know, that's just life. That's, you know, we're all, we're all on the hero's journey arc. That's, that's all of us. We're all having to sort of awaken to the fact that the world that we're in isn't everything that it should be. And we can't just stay where things are familiar. We can't just stay where it's comfortable, where it's easy. That we're called to, and it cycles throughout life that we have to hit a new point of realization of like, wow, yet again, I'm being called out into the wilderness. Yet again, I'm being called into a place I haven't been before to be challenged. I'm being called into a place to face the fear of man. I'm being called to a place to face layers of things that I didn't even know were resistant to God. I didn't even know were just unmoving, not alive, not as it should be. And, and even just areas like, I thought I had this, you know? I, I thought I was already there with you. How could I forget? How could I fall short here? And his answer is just, I'm always here. I'm always here. I'm always loving you. I'm not here to condemn you. This isn't three strikes and you're out. This isn't baseball. This isn't, this isn't like, you know what? I saved you and I did all this stuff for you. So now I have these certain standards I expect you to meet. And you're supposed to keep on growing at this rate. And if you don't grow at this rate, well then I'm mad at you. I'm going to curse you like the fig tree. Like that's not the heart of the Father. But sometimes we make that assumption. For some reason, it's kind of in us to very easily veer into the performance theology. It's very easy for us to fall into that, you know, but I want to be excellent. But I want to, I want to do well for God. I want to, I want, I, I, I'm disappointed with myself. Okay, but is he disappointed with you? Is he? Is, is, that what, is that what the Father said over you? That he was disappointed in your behavior? I don't think so. He's, he doesn't have disappointment in you. He's, he says, I see more in you than that. <laughs> Even when you're at your best, come on, come closer. You know, like when a toddler is learning to walk. Come on, come on. You can go further. He's never condemning. That's not his attitude. That's not, that's, he doesn't want us to replace <laughs> The lack of condemning father figure by condemning ourselves instead. It's not, hey, I won't judge you, but you need to judge yourself. <laughs> he does judge, but it's not us. It's everything that gets in the way of him. It's everything that separates us from him. His purpose for us is just to continue us on this journey of growing nearer to him, coming more and more into his love. And for every single person... That's unique. That's special. It's not the same rate. We can't, we can't look and say, you should be further along than that. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. What we do know is, are we really on fire for God right now ourselves? Are we really choosing to go all out, go after him right now ourselves? Or is it the heart that's in us that's saying, God, I'm doing what I'm doing, what I think I know I'm supposed to be doing right now, but you interrupt me. Whatever your plans are, whatever it is you're wanting to do, feel free to interrupt me. And I'm going to take time and shut up and get out of the way and let you speak. I'm not going to just keep on going through the, you know, it was the cares and the matters, the affairs of this world that were the thorns that choked the seed. And that's not, that is worries, you know, yeah, that is, cons, you know, real concerns, real things that we have that we deal with in life. But that's also just the daily drudgery. That's also just... The grind, that's also just, even the good things that become repetitive cycles, that become, this is just clock in, clock out, do this thing, okay, on we go. We have to make sure that we don't become calloused and we don't become hardened by the daily patterns, that we don't let these rhythms enslave us. That's why a lot of times God calls up a change of season. That's why he doesn't let it just be the same because he knows that we got to get stirred up. He knows that change has to happen. We have to experience him in new ways. When you get used to God speaking to you in a certain way, get ready for him to change. He's going he's to he's speak in a different way. Because he's going to 
get you off that pattern. He's going to get you into a new place. You know, Song of Solomon, God is a romantic person. He really wants to pursue us, and he wants us to pursue him. And that's the part that I think we as the church, we need to take responsibility for that. You know, we need to realize that we can't just be waiting for God constantly to get us excited. We can't just be waiting for him to step in the room and then, oh, yay, Jesus, you know, now we're happy because you've showed up. We have a part to play, too. We have a part to say, Lord, we do want more of you. We're not content to be just at this level that we're at right now with you. The point that we have in our relationship with you, it's not far enough yet. It's not good enough yet. You know, you want more, and I want more, too. I'm, you know, we can all hit a place. You know, and it's just, it's, it's human, and it's also just a part of our Western culture, part of our American culture, that we're, like, looking for this, this zenith and this point that's like plateau, okay, I hit it, I finished, I'm retired, you know, I've done the thing that I need to do. And that doesn't happen in relationship. That doesn't happen in marriage. That doesn't happen with God. It's, it's, it's ongoing. It's, it's continuing. It's increasing. You know, we're going from glory to glory. We're going from faith to faith, from strength to strength. It's, it's a process. That doesn't stop. That's unending to the till the day we go on into glory. And we have no idea what happens after that. It probably doesn't stop then either, you know. <laughs> Big surprise. And, and we know that at the end of the day, God's purpose, we're not Gnostics. God's purpose is not to do away with the body and do away with this physical world. He loves it. That's why he's recreating all of it. You know, that's the truth. The truth of the gospel is that God loved and redeemed not just our spirit, not just our immortal soul, but our bodies. He loves this creation. He wants to redeem all of this. So the pattern of what was in the garden, the pattern of what God was doing from the very beginning, do we really think that he was going, he was going to abandon that? Do we really think that he was going to just, hey, you know what, that was a bad idea, let's scrap that. Like, uh, you know, let's, let's kind of get past where people can make mistakes and imperfections and uh, it's not, that wasn't a good idea. No. He created everything knowing that it was never going to be perfect like him. Knowing there is nothing out there that is ever going to be complete, as, as whole, as unfailing, and, and just holy. The holiness of God. Nothing is ever going to be like God. Nothing he's created. And he was fine with that. He, he didn't have an issue with that. It was never like... Man, I keep on trying to make you more like me, and you just don't get it, and you just don't get there. No. He started us at a certain point, and yes, that was sinless. But it was limited. It wasn't perfect compared to himself. And what he wants us to know is just to really understand the purpose of grace understand that his love for us that is not conditional and but it is meant to bring the best out of us it is meant to call us into something higher into something better and while we can i mean we can live out our whole lives according to our own plans our own ideas we can live out our whole lives with with a certain level of relationship with god and hey, I mean, it's fine. He, he loves you, and he gives you freedom, and he's not going to condemn you for that. He's like, you know what? You didn't try hard enough, so I'm not letting you in. That's, that's not his heart. But I would rather go on from this life knowing that I gave my best, that I, I went all in, because he went all in. He gave everything. There was nothing that God did not give up for even just me, if I was the only one. And the same is for every single one of you. He gave everything. Like Todd White says, heaven went bankrupt for you. God gave his best in everything that mattered for you. So how can we see that love and not respond with everything that's within us? God, I want to love you with all that I am. I want to live my life truly for you not conditionally, not based on my own power, what I can do. I know I need you to love you. I know it's through, it's by, it's through Christ. It's through faith. It's through Christ alone. He works in us to will and to do his good pleasure. 
But it is our part to pray and say, Lord, I want to love you better. I want to love you more. It's not good enough yet. It's not where I want to be yet. I want to love every single person here more. Whether or not they're offending me. Whether or not they're making me happy. Whether or not right now I'm just drawn to them. You're drawn to them. You love them. So I'm asking that you love them for me. I'm asking that you would say what you want to say. I've got my own opinions. I've got my own ideas of what each of them need. I've got my own discernment. But who cares? That's nothing. What do you see, God? What do you want for them? How do you love them? Because that's how I want to love them. It's not good enough yet where I'm at now. And, you know, I'm still happy with what he's done. I'm, I'm content with your love. I'm content with who you are for me. But I want to go further for you. I want to go deeper with you. You know, so that's just, that's my heart's cry. And I just, if there's anything that I can leave you with, it's that if you will seek the Lord, you, He will be found. He will be found. He will be there for you, however. He will be as real to you as you want Him to be. He will be as present for you as you desire for Him to be. And that's, that's the truth. And, and, and that's in every moment. You know, that's not just in the big minutes. That's not just in the times that we desperately need Him. That's not just in the times that, that we feel especially anointed. That's, that's in, that's in the, even the mundane and the drudgery. I think it's really important that we learn to practice like the patriarchs, that in the mundane things, and in the everyday things, that we are trying to stay connected with God. We're trying to hear His voice. That we're living that place. And, and it's not that it's up to us to make it happen you know, he, he's more eager to speak than we are to listen. That's the reality. All we have to do is just, like Reese Howell said, just be willing to be made willing. <laughs> just pray that prayer. Just say that out loud. Lord, I'm willing to be made willing. You know, there are some things and there are some times that I just want to have my way. But Lord, help me want your way. Yeah. Help me want what you want so that I can want what's best for everybody around me. So that I can want your best for myself. That, that humility, that's, that's everything. That giving your life completely into God's hands. I die daily. Every day I'm a living sacrifice before God. Every day I'm giving everything up to Him. Every moment. And I want to do it better. I want to do it better every moment. I want to do it better every day. I want to figure out what is my mandate now in this season. What is my calling right now? I'm not looking for how can, I, how can I figure out what I can do apart from God. How can I figure out what I can do and not have to check in. God, how do I walk with you better? How do I do things more in partnership with you? <laughs> then that's, that's my heart's cry, and that's what I hope that is just imparted. I'm just going to pray impartation right now for everybody here. <sighs> Breath of God, Spirit of God, just ask that you pour out over everyone in this building. That, God, they would carry revival in their hearts. They would carry revival, fire, hunger for God. <laughs> Desire for you, Jesus. A love and a zeal for the bridegroom, for Christ. Jesus, you are the head. And if we are, if we are raising you up, if we are exalting you, then you will draw everyone to yourself. And you will unite the body. You will heal the wounds. We thank you that you... You came to preach the gospel to the poor, to mend the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. And God, we come before you. We are poor, and we are broken. And God, without you, to the extent that we don't have you, we're in bondage. We need your freedom so that we can love you. God, so that we can serve you with all of our hearts. Not out of, not out of fear, but out of love. Like a bond servant, we want to be with you. We want to love you. We want to do what brings delight and joy to your heart because you're constantly good to us in everything, in every single way. God, I just impart that hunger for you, that love for you to pursue a deeper relationship, to know you in the daily things, to be listening and hearing the voice of God, to be moved in heart and spirit and in discipline. Daily habits. God, I just pray that you would begin to release just revelation, insight into every person here. 
how they can get more of you into each day. How they can invite you, Lord. Because we need creativity and we need insight. We need wisdom to know how do we incorporate you in a drive to somewhere. How do we incorporate you into customer relations? How do we incorporate you into just these daily tasks and things that we do? You know, Lord. You know exactly. Holy Spirit, you're a genius and you know how to do everything. And so I just ask that you would release insight, even whether in dreams or visions or impressions or leadings, that, God, we would all become better, just better friends of you. We want to be better friends. We want to be better lovers of God. As you have loved us, God, you loved us first. And so I just release an impartation of love, love for God, in every single person here, hunger for God, for more of your spirit. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. God, thank you. Thank you that you're doing this and everybody here in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Come on. Come on. Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Sean. Well, we love you guys. I'm going to leave the baskets right there. If you want to give into the ministry, this is be a, a good place and a good time to do that. I'm not, not going to be all formal about it, but I want to lift up any specific prayers. Uh, we've already prayed for Cindy. Uh, Sean and Brandy, why don't you come up here? Let's let's just bless them. Amen. I want anybody that wants to come and pray and lay hands on them and um, have a word for them if you got one. Father, we just thank you for this young couple who's here and committed and purposefully uh, not just attending but participating <laughs> in the work that you're doing here. We thank you for Brandy being on the praise team. We thank you for the anointing on Sean's life to speak the word, to encase the glory of God and uh, the Holy Spirit and the word of the Holy Spirit to come into not only his own life, but into others' lives. Father, we just thank you and we expand that anointing. We expand that purpose. We, we agree and touch and agree on his words come Holy Spirit, Father. We just thank you for more in every single one that's participating right here, that's touching them. They may they touch and agree, not only to get that that mantle of healing, that mantle of health, that mantle of Holy Spirit, that mantle of word that everyone here participates, that everyone here uh, extends and releases that anointing on their lives but receives it right back. <laughs> full, full, and more full. More full. More full. More full. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Anybody got something for them? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There it is. <laughs> I knew it was coming. The Lord just reminded me, I believe, when y'all first came here, of a word that he gave me for you, and he's reminded me of it good, again. Good, you yeah. stand tall. Yeah, we can hear that. I don't know if you meant that, but I want to go he reminded me. Yeah, that you stand tall and that you're like a beacon to others. He said, never be afraid of the word that I put in your mouth because it's my word and it's a word that is needed and it's a word that you're going to speak clearly. You're going to articulate that word so that it hits people's hearts. Your word has touched my heart today. Good. Good. I was sitting back there being lazy praying for you. <laughs> but what I heard was God saying gravy. I 
don't know what it means, but gravy. Usually that means more than we expect. But gravy was the word that I received for you. Yeah, that's that's got a good. I like gravy. That's got to be good stuff, right? <laughs> uh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. All right. <laughs> he's not done. I don't know what else he's doing, but he's not done yet. Well, you know what? Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, Toronto outpouring. I mean, they prayed for everyone who wanted prayer. That's 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 a principle that they said. That they said we're not leaving until every single person who wanted prayer gets prayer. Hey, let's get everybody to come up. Everybody, let's come up and all gather around me, just like a circle right here. Yeah. Uh, and Sean, why don't you make sure everybody? I'll be glad to do it. All right. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, so, absolutely. So we'll let you all right. pray over everybody. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we just invite you, Lord. We invite you, Holy Spirit. We want more of you. We want more of you, Lord. We want more of you, Lord. God, we just open up the floor to you. What you want to say, what you want to do. Holy Spirit, this is about you. This is about your ministry. It's about the ministry of Jesus. We're here for the ministry of Jesus. We're here for the gospel. We're here for what you what you died to give us, what you were raised to give us. Blow over us, Holy Spirit. Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit. Blow over us in this place. I just pray right now over Brandy. Lord, release your anointing in her life. Break every yoke of oppression. God, everything that wants to silence her voice, everything that wants to keep her from moving in, into a new realm of confidence and just blazing a trail, going forward, going into the unknown, not looking back, not looking behind her, not worrying that she's going too fast because you're with her. You're with her. You're going to move with her. She can run as fast as she wants. You're going to keep up. God, thank you that you're doing that in her life. Thank you for just acceleration that's beyond anything that I've ever seen and that you're going to do it more Lord you're going to blow her mind, you're going to blow my mind you're going to blow everybody's mind and what you're doing in her life we agree with that Holy Spirit we agree with what you're doing in her life in Jesus name God thank you for Eli thank you for what you've done in his life God thank you that he's an anointed little man that you have a purpose for him thank you Father that you're going to set before him the right people the right connections and the right times. He's going to grow in favor with God and men. That you're going to work in him your purposes. Thank you for releasing your destiny in his life, God. Thank you for that love that's in his heart, Lord. And we just pray protection over that purity, protection over that love, and that there will be strength there. There will be strength to hold the line and just walk in love no matter what comes his way that your angels will surround him. He'll be protected. Thank you, Lord. For Annalise, God, we just thank you for the gifts that you've given her and thank you for the heart that you've given her, Lord. That she has, she is a woman after your own heart. Thank you, God, that you have spoken amazing things into her life and over her life. Things that have been heard and things that have been whispered that just haven't fully made it up to the surface of consciousness yet. And God, I'm just asking that you would bring to her remembrance the dreams, the things that you have given her, the things, the whispers in her heart. That Father, even things that she hasn't dared to dream of for herself, that you would bring those things to the surface and bring them as a vision to her mind. That God, she could begin to latch onto your calling and dare to hope for bigger things and better things for her life. God, that she will be established in your body. That she will be set in the place that is, is broad, that gives her freedom to be all that she is called to be. God, thank you for an increase of the anointing so that she can go deeper in relationship with you. 
that oil that's intimacy, that's not just, oh, look at me, but it's look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. Your power and your love will just increase in her life in every way. God, we bless that work that you've been doing in her. We bless that work that you have for her. Her field is prepared before her. Her field is ready before her. And you're going to promote her in the right hour at the right time. And she's going to glorify you. She is already glorifying you. You see her heart, Lord, that she's faithful to you. And you love her, God. And I just thank you for that love. And I ask that, Father, she would feel that love more and more. She would know the loving heart of the Father. The Father heart of God. Let that love be released into her. Heal every brokenness, God. Come in and just empower her in every way. That she would be what a woman of God is meant to look like. And in your timing, the right man will come along. In your timing, she will find the right one, the one you've destined for her. And she won't have to search north, south, east, and west. She won't have to look all over. It will come in your timing. And you'll protect her heart. You'll protect her until that time. In Jesus' name. God, we just bless Lily. Thank you for the, the heart of Lily. Thank you for the exuberance, the joy. Father, we just speak an increase of that. And that all fear will be broken off of her. All stress will be broken off of her. Her path will be clear also, Father. Thank you, Lord, that she is not, she's not the least. She is not the least, not in your eyes. She is not left behind. God, I just pray that you would show her the heart for you that, she, that is in her, God, and the heart that you have for her. Father, we just prophesy over her new direction, new direction, a deep vision, something she can fall in love with in your heart and all that you have for her, God. Show her the, how the pieces fit together. Give her a glimpse of the future. Give her a glimpse of what's in your heart for her. Father, we just thank you that you're strengthening her for everything that comes in between, for the preparation. Preparation for the calling that's on her life. She's not a wanderer. She's not just just happening to live here in Huntsville, just happening to live in this time. You placed her here in this time and in this place for a purpose, for a reason. And God, I just thank you that you're going to begin to move on her just like you moved on David when he was alone out in the field and he wasn't being seen and he wasn't, he didn't know what he was supposed to do with his life other than just be obedient and just fulfill the role that he had in front of him. But you reached him out there. You brought out in him a heart of leadership. You brought out in him a heart of a worshiper. You, you turned him into a man after your own heart. And I just thank you, Lord, that you're going to work in Lily. You're going to show her things, great and mighty things that she does not know. In Jesus' name. God, thank you for Ellie. We just release blessing over her father that she will be able to go forth and preach the gospel in even the highest academic places. And even the darkest corners where people don't know anything about you. That, Lord, she'll be a light. God, thank you for coming into the darkest places with her and showing her your love in those places so that she can share that love with others. Thank you, God, for destroying all captivity, all bondage, for letting her be a light to her family. Father, thank you that your anointing is upon her, that you are stronger. Greater is he that is in Ellie than he that is in the world. God, thank you that you are going to give her the words and the directions and just the spirit that she needs, that she can war in the opposite spirit. She can bring joy to those situations. She can bring peace to those situations. She can glorify you in the arena to which you've called her. God, we just release her with that anointing that she can, she can break yokes where she's going. She can tear down bondage, destroy those high places that are set up against God. And the glory will pour out upon her through her life in Jesus' name. God, we pray for Louise. We just release healing over her in the name of Jesus. Healing. God, thank you that she will be able to complete the mission that you put her on this earth to do. 
Every single book that she's called to write, every single work that she is called to, to finish, every person that she's called to touch, that she's not going to be cut short from any of it. She's going to finish this race well. And God, we are praying and we are believing together for healing. We ask, Father, that you would do what you did in Abraham and Sarah, that you you just did what was what made no sense. It didn't even seem the least bit possible for anybody. And for Moses, that was as strong as he was in his 30s and 40s when he was when he was an old man. God, we thank you that you are not limited by our physicality. You're not limited by death. You overcame death. You held the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And God, we just ask now and contend that Louise would stand strong. Her knees, her she would have strong knees, she would have strong hips, she would have a strong spine, that her ears would be opened up, would pop open, and she could hear everything clearly. God, we are just believing for the revelation that you have for her in her life and for her to be a demonstration of the power of God. In Jesus' name, redemption of all the purposes and everything that is yet to be fulfilled in her life in the name of Jesus. God, thank you for Juan. Thank you for the father heart that he walks in. Thank you for the, the gentleness, the kindness and compassion, God, that you've gifted him with. Father, we just ask that this man that has, that has humbled himself, that has been so humble, God, that you would exalt him according to your word. That, Father, even though it may not be what he wants for himself, but it's what you want because you want to touch other people's lives through him. You want other people to be set free and to know the love of the Father through one. And God, I just ask that you would promote him in the right places, that he would be in the right place at the right time for what you want to do in his life and what you want to do through him. That you would give him a gift of faith. It's, it's not about him. It's not about his name. It's not about his glory. It's not about how great Juan is. It's about how great God is in Juan. How great Jesus is in Juan. God, thank you for giving him just a passion to see deliverance for the captives. To see God glorified through his life. In the name of Jesus, we release that over him. And let that anointing increase. Let that father heart of love increase in him. God, to just begin to flow out, that would just begin to touch people around him, people that don't know him, haven't even been able to talk to him, would just feel the love of God and would break down in tears and would just know that they're being touched by God and something special is, has come near them. God, let it be done for your glory. In Jesus' name. God, thank you for this mighty woman of God. Thank you for everything, Lord, that Aggie has been able to come through by your strength, through your power, through your goodness and your love, God, your mercy. And you're not done with her, Lord. You're not done. You got more and better. Thank you, Lord, that you will redeem the years the locusts be. You will restore those things. That, Father, you're going to give her a whole new whole new experience, a whole new level of revelation, a whole new level of authority to see the captives set free, to see the broken hearts healed. God, thank you for a new revelation for how to walk in power and anointing, that you'd be clothed with power from on high to bring that gospel to all the victims, to everyone that has been hurt, that has just been brutalized in this generation. Especially the women, Lord, especially the children. That God, she will carry your heart and your power, your authority. God, thank you for just raising her ministry to a new height because it's your ministry. Because it's you, Jesus. Because you have a heart and a passion for these people, just as you do for Aggie. And we just release that in her life in Jesus' name, and declare that there is no weapon formed against her that shall prosper. Every tongue that has risen up against her in judgment, we condemn in the name of Jesus. This is her inheritance as a servant of the Lord. Her righteousness is from you. God, thank you for raising up her body to strength, to strength, to heal all trauma, all damage, reverse it. 
and bring her up to a place to just be a testimony of God's power and glory and love and redemption in Jesus' name. God, thank you for Chip. We just release blessing over Chip. Thank you, Father, for his heart to worship you, to worship you in spirit and in truth, to set a place where you are glorified, a heart to build a temple for God like David. God, I just pray that you would bless that intention of his heart to set a place for you, that you would come even more, Lord. You do come in this place. You do answer by fire. You do come where the worship is real. And Lord, I ask that you do more. Do more, Lord. And send more worshipers that worship in spirit and in truth. God, let them come. Let them come. And I just pray that, Father, every single barrier and obstacle to that purpose would be removed, would be destroyed. That you would just bring the, the heavenly strategies, the heavenly directives to Chip. That he would know, Lord, how to cooperate with you. We thank you that he has a heart that he wants to move with you, God. He wants to see your purposes fulfilled in this place and in every area of his life. And God, I just pray that every single distracting voice and every single interfering thing that wants to get in the way, that God, you would remove it. That he would hear the voice of God so clearly in the big things and in the small things. That God, there would just be perfect alignment with heaven perfect alignment with heaven in his life and his ministry and what you have called him to do. Thank you for his faithfulness, Lord. And thank you that you are going to increase the anointing on his life. You're going to increase the presence, the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit in his life. He is desired more and he's going to receive more. More is going to be given. And we just agree with that, God. We agree with what you're saying, Holy Spirit, with what the Spirit is saying. We say yes. We say, come, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Deeper and stronger understanding of the ways of God. Deeper and stronger understanding of the Word of God, how the Word and the Spirit align and for this house in Jesus' name. God, thank you for Troy. Thank you for her heart to serve, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that she has the heart of a servant, and that is to you a beautiful, beautiful thing, because that's the heart that was in Jesus, is in you still, because you're still interceding for us. You're still there before the Father. You don't have to do that, but you're doing it because you love us. <laughs> you so love us, and thank you that that same kind of love is in Troy, and the heart that she has for her family, the heart that she has for everyone that she adopts as family, and the family of God that she loves. <laughs> Father, I ask that you would begin to redeem things in her life, restore things that, that she has never even thought of, and, and just let go and just, hey, it's all right, God's good, that you would bring those things, restore, resurrect dreams that she forgot, resurrect things that she didn't even know that she wanted. God, restore to her those things. Restore just a joy that is childlike, that's before the hard things that happen in life. That's before the hard knocks. And that is more and greater than even what was before. You are able to do exceeding abundantly above and beyond what we can ask or think. According to the power of the Holy Spirit that works in us. And God, you are working in Troy. You're doing an amazing work in her life. And God, I pray that there would begin to just be a release of fruit from that work of the Holy Spirit. More and more, Lord both the character of Christ and the manifestation of the power of God. Revival where she's at. Revival in her family. Revival at the grocery store. Revival where she works. Revival where she serves. Because it doesn't have to be a big sermon. It doesn't have to be a giant message. It doesn't have to be some powerful thing of just look at this gift. Just somebody just in simple obedience doing something in love. And you can come upon people and cause them to come to tears and crying and repenting and receiving Christ. God, let that power be in her life for your glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Because you anoint your servants. Your spirit, you said you'd pour out on your servants, on your men's servants, your maid servants. God, thank you that you're doing that in Troy. We just, we just bless that, Lord. We bless what you're doing in her Holy Spirit. We say more, Lord, more Holy Spirit. 
More Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for this prayer warrior, Lord. This woman of God, this prophetess, that she speaks and she hears from God. Mm. Father, we just ask that you would increase that anointing of hearing and releasing the words of God. Sharper words, sharper words, more understanding, clear vision, even clearer, Lord. Even clearer, Lord. Thank you, God, that you want to you want to blow her mind with things that she would be like, wow, I can't believe I'm saying this. I can't believe that, I, that this is coming to me, but it's got to be God because there's no way I would come up with this. Bigger and better things, exciting things. She's been faithful in, in just the hard parts, the grinds, the difficult parts where there's not a lot going on and just staying and being faithful. But you want to blow her mind. You want to do things that are exciting. You want to take her on, on a on just a beautiful journey, like a cruise, like a vacation, a vacation with God. Lord, I just pray that you would begin to open the doors for that to happen, Lord. I don't know what that looks like, but you know what it looks like, God. And you know the desires of her heart. And I just pray that you would release her, Lord, to just go into a deeper place of intimacy with you, to know you, who you are as a lover, God, who you are as a bridegroom. The loving Jesus, the tender Jesus, that she'll feel that and experience that and just have her mind blown and be brought to a whole new place of passion and joy because of the touch that you are bringing to her heart, that you're romancing her heart, Lord. God, we thank you. Thank you for the heart of the bridegroom being revealed to her in Jesus' name. We bless that work, Lord. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for Wendy. Bless Wendy, Lord. Bless Wendy, Lord. She's not in the background to you, Lord. She's not in the background to you, Lord. Father, we just thank you that you, you have things in this woman that she has not seen that nobody has seen yet. God, I just ask that you would unlock the things that have been waiting for their time, have been waiting for the due season. That, God, there would be a boldness as a lioness to come out with that and power. Power from on high. Power from on high. Father, you know her heart. Her heart is maybe a mystery to many, but to you, you see it clearly. You know exactly what Wendy has been waiting for. You know exactly what she desires in her heart, God. And Father, I thank you that it is the desire of your heart to give it to her. You want to give her the deepest desires of her heart. And Father, we just pray. We just say yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord. Give Wendy the deep desires of her heart. And unlock those things that have been waiting for their time. In the name of Jesus. We just bless this woman of God. We bless her in the anointing that you have given her for worship. The love and service as a mother in this house. And just pray that Father, that nurturing spirit would just become even more powerful. Would just extend and touch everybody's life even deeper. In Jesus' name. Oh, Adeline. Adeline. <laughs> Bless this sweet little girl, Lord. Bless this precious girl, God. Father, thank you that you have an amazing life, a destiny for her. Father, things that are beyond our comprehension because we just see the, the little person that she is right now, Lord. But you see the woman of God that you are going to raise her up to be and everything that is in between because it's all precious to you. Father, thank you for taking her by the hand and maturing her and helping her to enjoy the journey along the way. The whole way, Lord. I just pray that you would grace her, God, that she wouldn't have to go through a time of confusion, of loss of identity, of wondering who she is, but that she would just walk with you hand in hand and just have a testimony that's just like, I've always known. 
I've always known where, who God is for me. I've always known what He's had for me. He's always been good to me. That God, she would have that confidence and that she would just be like a breath of fresh air, like, like a wind from the Garden of Eden. That people would be like, wow, so that's what it's like to just not be broken by the world and not be traumatized and not be messed up. God, restore her for everything that the enemy has tried to do against her. Protect her mind. Protect her dreams, Lord. Yeah. Let the enemy be cut off from every entrance. Yes. Every curse be broken off of her in Jesus' name. Jesus, we thank you that you love this little one. We ask that you would come to her in her dreams and hold her and protect her and keep away every bad thing in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Uh, yeah, especially to Brandy. But, um, Father God, your Papa is proud of y'all. Even when you're not doing anything that you consider an accomplishment, he just, and he likes to hang out with y'all every day and just to be with y'all. You don't even have to be doing something. And he, he's so proud of y'all. He's like, have I shown everybody uh, the newest pictures of my kids you want to see they're so cute I adore them and he delights just to hang out with y'all so just as y'all are how he created y'all I think that about does it that's good stuff alright yeah 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 give me more night club <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, go home and learn to love people more. Amen. Right? <laughs>